This is one of my rabbit furs. I'll be tanning it today. It's um, just been skinned off and stretched out to dry. Um, I generally try to avoid leaving too much membrane and especially meat or fat on the hide when we skin. Um, but of course, there's always little bits left, especially along the spine. Um, so those are going to get moistened and scraped off before we start tanning. But this is what it looks like before we begin. It's very stiff and crinkly, fully dried. Um, the hides preserve really well in this state, so it's a nice way to keep them stashed until you're ready to work them. Here's my next step, which in our Alaskan cabin happens under the wood stove. Uh, I just laid the hide on our platform under the stove and dribbled some water on it, some warm water. And then all I do is spread it around to try to get it on as much of the skin as possible. Of course, without, you know, trying not to spill too much and trying not to get the fur wet on the edges. I might do this a few times before the entire skin is actually moist enough to begin working. spots are wetter than other, but the entire thing has had some water spread over it. And then I actually used plastic over top. So I spread out and pressed down the plastic as thoroughly as possible over the hide so that the plastic is in direct contact with the flesh side of the hide. And what this lets you do is keeps traps the moisture on the skin while allowing the heat from the wood stove to penetrate down into it. Um, you can also wet the hide and fold it over on itself. And of course, if you have a generally very warm house or an easier warm place to keep it that wouldn't dry it out, um, then that works just fine as well. Um, but this works well for me, just making sure the hide can absorb that moisture without the heat trying to dry it at the same time. I'm just going to let it sit like that for a little while, maybe 20-30 minutes before I check it again. The areas that were already moist will tend to dry out more quickly, especially if they're thinner spots, so make sure you keep them moist as well. Alright, and then I'm just going to cover it back up and let it keep warming. Okay, so the hide is nice and moist now. It's absorbed all the water that it needs to. So now I'm just going to wet scrape it. I have a basic steel scraper that my honey made for me. One edge of it is a little sharper. Most of it is pretty dull. Um, all different kinds of scrapers will work, so it's just whatever you're comfortable with. And now I really just use firm, steady pressure to scrape the membrane away. This is a lot easier over the spine area of the hide. The closer you get to the edges with rabbit skin, the more uh, fuzzy the layers are between membrane and actual skin. So you may find it's worth it to just leave a little bit of membrane near the edges because if you go too hard trying to get all of it off, you may tear holes. If it seems like it's fighting you too much, you may have to just go back and soak it more. Here you can see there's some white showing up. And that means that part of the hide is dry because it was underneath membrane, so it didn't get as well soaked as the other areas. Well, it doesn't hurt to just stop and re-soak it, and that'll make it easier to scrape. And then you just continue scraping until you get off as much membrane as you can. If you get a nice big piece like this, sometimes you can simply pull. Although some of the time, as you pull, it'll kind of change how many layers it's lifting, and you may either get a hole in the hide or leave some thinner membrane behind, in which case you should just stop and go back to using your scraper. But every now and then it'll give you a good, a good pull, and you can get the layers off that you need. 
So you can see this area was thicker membrane, <clears throat> so the skin underneath is a lot drier, but it's still moist enough that it's pulling pretty well. And now I'm going to stop pulling because I'm getting close to the edge of the hide where it gets a lot finer and I don't want to risk tearing a hole. So now my hide is nicely scraped. If there's any membrane left, it's only tiny bits along the edges, which don't matter quite as much. There are a few small holes, which you can sew up if they're towards the middle or in the way of where you're going to be working. But for the most part, it's now a nice clean hide. And you can see some areas of it are already starting to dry. So this is where we start stretching and softening. And all you have to do for that really is just pull it in every different direction and work your way over the entire hide as regularly as possible, making sure you get all the edges and pulling the middle of it all different ways. And what this is doing is um, loosening the, the bond between the fibers of the hide as it's drying so that it can stay supple, not allowing it to dry locked back in stiff. So as it turns white like this, it's getting drier, but it's not actually fully dry until you can feel it and put it to your face and it feels warm and not cool to the touch. So even though it looks like it's getting drier, it'll take a while yet of stretching before it's actually finished and ready to be smoked. So now that my hide is starting to get somewhat dry, I'm going to work in a small amount of lard. This is pork lard that we rendered. Uh, any kind of animal fat well rendered will work just fine. Um, I've heard of people also using coconut oil and of course you can use other kinds of dressing like um, fish eggs or brains or um, even chicken eggs, soap and oil. Um, but working a little bit of fat in is a very simple way to soft tan your hide and keep it nice and supple. You can see I don't really use that much. It's really just a thin coating and I just work it around the entire hide. And then of course it's really greasy and sloppy feeling for a few minutes and then the hide will start to soak it up and uh, it becomes easier to work again. Now I have a pretty good coating. You should be able to feel and see if you missed a spot. I'm sure you can tell it gets pretty shiny as you've got the new fat on there. So just make sure you get a nice even coat and then go back to stretching. Here's my finished rabbit skin. It hasn't been smoked. Um, I'm sewing it onto my hood and I'll probably smoke the entire thing once it's finished. Um, smoking is super simple. You can do it in a variety of ways and I'll just let you do your own research about that. Um, but here you can see how nicely the hide turned out. The whole main center portion is nice and soft and supple. Moves really easily. Around the edges there was a little bit of membrane left. You can hear it's a little crinkly, but for what I'm using it for, I'm not too worried about that. Different hides will be easier or more difficult to get all the membrane off. And in that case, it's easier just to focus on hides that come really nicely clean for times when you really want the entire thing to be perfectly supple. But for most projects, it's not going to hurt to have a little bit of the edges a little bit stiff. But you can see the whole thing is still very flexible and very usable and of course has lovely, lovely soft fur on the other side. So that's my tanned rabbit skin.